not engaging here. So you can see the motor turns over, which is good. It does feel like it has compression. All right, let's give it a little sniff and see what happens. It, uh, <laughs> it started up. We worked out a deal with the guy, so I'm going to take these two guys home. We are loaded up. Let's get on out of here. Hey guys, so it's been about a year later. Pulled this thing here and pretty much just parked it and here it sits. All these parts and everything pulled off of it. What you see, buddy? Huh? You find some little rodents? So this is a Ransom's Jaguar 4000. And if you remember, I picked this thing up at a junkyard where I picked up that old Steiner 430 Max. So this thing is in pretty rough shape. As you can see, the seat has seen much better days. And it's basically falling apart. A lot of the pedals are just stuck and solid. The tires are all flat battery is completely kaput a lot of the levers probably don't move you can see we got a big hole in that mower deck tire so if we take this cover off we can see some of the spindles here this one kind of moves the center one does turn this one also turns but it requires a special rib to belt, so we'll have to find one of those. I'm sure that's going to be a lot of fun. So this mower deck moves up and down with these two hydraulic cylinders under here. And you can see one is leaking, or both of them are leaking pretty good. 
All these brakes are just, looks like this cable is seized up. This tire is holding air, amazingly. So if we take this engine cover off, you can see under the hood that it is powered by a three cylinder liquid cold Mitsubishi diesel, which has about 2,890 hours or 2,090 hours. Looks like the oil filter is a genuine Mitsubishi. So we'll go ahead and check some of the fluids on it. This cap is a little rusty here. But we do have some coolant down there. And it does look fairly green. There's a little bit of corrosion in there. This is our diesel fuel filter here. And it does look like it's full. Go ahead and check the oil on it. And the oil is a little dark but it is at the correct level so that is good go and get this busted seat out of the way here check the fuel on it the tank does look empty yeah that tank is pretty empty it's a plastic tank it probably looks worse on camera than it actually is let's see if we can see anything down there there's like just a tiny bit cap's got a little rust on it so this is your hydraulic fluid before we get anything to fall down in there let's kind of get some of this rust out of here so our hydraulic fluid looks decent in there it does have a screen so that's good hopefully that's not severely contaminated so it didn't come with a key however I do have a pretty big ring of assorted machinery keys so we'll see if we can find one that will fit as you can see this is our PTO switch it turns our blades on as a temp gauge and a fuel gauge and there's our glow plugs so it looks like somebody put a fuse here Looks like these bolts are missing out of this cover for some odd reason. Oh, this looks decent in here. If we do need to replace that key switch, it looks like it shouldn't be too much trouble. So it looks like this is the original color of the machine. And you can see it is pretty faded. Here's our ransoms plate. Gives a lot of the numbers. I don't know what, what year this thing is. If you know, please maybe post in the comments if you have any idea. So I do see some hinges here. So I believe whole seat thing kind of lifts up oh, wow. okay yeah we still have a lot of vines growing through this thing in the junkyard and that steiner was the same way looks like we have old squirrel's nest down in there this is our hydraulic pump and all our linkages i believe this is like a proportioning valve looks kind of rusty Alrighty, so let's see if uh, we can put some air in these tires and we'll go ahead and give this thing a very much needed bath. And I'm hearing a good leak somewhere. Sweet. I'm not having high hopes for this one. Give it a try though. Right, it's taking some air, but it's leaking out pretty good. I'm amazed at even some of these tires are taking air. It's just crazy. I mean, these rims are kind of rusty. You can see the rust flaking off and there's just cracks all along these tires. Alright, let's get some of this loose stuff cleaned out here. Man, look at the rust. That's crazy. Let's finally get this goofy seed out of here. I 
found our tire leak. Yeah, it's from the rust in the wheel here. Too much of this, this whole battery's gonna fall fall off. And that was once a really thick battery tray. <laughs> it looks like a actually a steel steel C channel here. <laughs> it's rusted almost completely through.
well. <laughs> oh gosh. This whole fan is just completely light rotted out. That might end up staying off. All right, well, here's our oil pan. Let's go ahead and finish pressure washing, I guess. good bearings i think it's been running for like a minute all right fellas i think that is about as good as she's gonna get i don't know if it was a squirrel nest in there or if this thing just mowed over a lot of dog food because it has a very interesting smell to what came out of the bottom under here All right, well about 10 years of pressure washing later and well, it still pretty much looks like crap. However, now I can kind of see what this thing's made of and man, this thing is built like an absolute tank. It's got frame rails on it like a truck, hydraulic steering, have a hydraulic cylinder packed away right here. What I did find pretty interesting is this is a Sunstrand hydraulic pump right here and it is the same exact pump that is on my Steiner 430 that came out of the same junkyard that this one did. And I actually have a spare one of these that I pretty much got for free, so happy about that. So I don't know if I mentioned it, but this thing sat out in that junkyard for probably close to 20, 25 years. And if this thing wasn't built like such an absolute tank, it would have been way worse than it is. The steel that they used on this, I mean, look, that's, that's some pretty, pretty thick steel for a lawnmower which this is more of like an industrial lawnmower than your regular residential lawnmower one cool thing about this you can see it has these chain cutouts for it so you can basically tie it down to a trailer pretty easy i haven't checked this air filter yet so let's just kind of see what it's looking like here goodness that thing is stuck in there <laughs> that thing's in there. Yeah, it's, it's a little dirty. Not too, too bad. So these battery wires are pretty much shot and I just noticed that these battery wires should actually go through here and that's actually where the battery goes so I have no idea why they put a battery here so this is our throttle cable that goes to our injection pump and it is pretty locked up solid if I follow that it goes to this arm right here and yeah it's it's pretty seized so I'm gonna 
undo some of the stuff and straighten this cable out and see if I can oil it. Maybe that will free it up. straighten this thing out kind of force some oil down down there all right I think I got it freed up now oh yeah let's see if we can get this lever freed up just go around and see if we can get some of these other cables freed up Kind of a long shot on some of this stuff, but I'll give it a try. Alright, let's give this a try. Oh yeah, it's working good now. Alright, let's go ahead and get these battery wires fixed up. A little bit of discoloration, not too too bad though. All right, so I'm gonna just take these the ends of these wires and just kind of dip them in a little bit of muriatic acid. Should brighten them up here. I'll make the solder stick to them better. Clean some of that green death off of them. You can see that is with absolutely no cleaning. Just the acid and I sprayed it off with some brake clean. So I just made this little battery terminal fitting made out of a piece of 3 8 copper tube I have a video on doing that I'm just gonna kind of crimp it that'll hold it while I solder it battery in we still have one small issue and that is the key thankfully though I do have a pretty big thing of keys here for all kinds of equipment so let's just try them all right we'll just start off at the beginning here these seem to go in they just won't turn all the way oh that one goes in good sweet all right that one seems that seems to work and it looks like we got some things turned on the dash here all right we got temp oil light let's just hit it real quick oh that thing I'm sure we have some kind of safety. Let me see if I can push this seat thing down. Maybe that will do something. Whenever I push this down, we can see the solenoid on our injection pump moving.
it clicked like the starter wanted to go. All right, I'm gonna just hold this down and turn the key, see if that does anything. Nothing. I wonder if that starter is just locked up because I did have an issue when I was at the junkyard and I was trying to get this thing going. I think it was just having starter issues. So nothing's. I'm hearing a relay. Let's see if our glow plugs do anything. So I'm going to turn this on glow. And I don't see the glow plugs doing anything. There is a fuse right here, 50 amp fuse. It's probably our glow plug fuse. We got it shoved into a 30 amp. <laughs> oh. All right, I got a little test light hooked up. I'm just gonna test a couple things here. So yeah, we are good on those. We'll go ahead and check this glow plug circuit. All right, so right now the key is off. We do not have any power on the glow plugs. I'll go ahead and turn the key on. All right, so we yeah we got power on the glow plugs, so those are working. All right, so let's see if we got any power to the starter, which we do. And when I turn the key, I should be getting power on that. No, I'm not getting any power on it. So all right, so we're missing something here. We're just gonna have power. There. Here goes nothing. Uh -huh. Alright. Well, at least it turns over, so we know our starter is good. So I was just under here looking for switches. Here's another switch. Could have something to do with it. But I just saw on this fitting here, the hydraulic fitting. Man, that thing is about to go. That is really, really corroded. So I did kind of release this switch a little bit. I'm not sure that was an issue or not, but let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Nothing. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so I just pressed this switch. So this has to be pressed in, but then it started wanting to move. I don't want this thing to just take off. All right, so I just kind of jammed a stick right into it. I think this has to be pushed down though for that solenoid to unlock. So we'll give it a little bit of glow here. Let's give it a little bit of heat. Yeah, I guess it works. It just kind of stalled it out. We'll rev it up a little bit and try that again. And for some reason, I was wanting to cut it off. Let's go ahead and put some fuel in this. The sight glass is still full so we're still primed and i think that's why it really crunk up so easy it's because you know the whole fuel system was primed i didn't even have to bleed the injectors or anything but man don't this thing run like a top and it's so quiet too all right let's get some fresh stuff in her you can believe it guys this thing was running on like 20 25 year diesel fuel at the end there it kind of sounded like it was starting to maybe suck up some air 
Uh, maybe stall for sure a little bit. Isn't she just cherry? This thing runs great. No blow by at all. I mean, this thing just just purrs. It it runs really just as good as my uh, mini excavator engine. And it's got a Yamar in it. So yeah, this is uh, this Mitsubishi engine runs pretty good. All right, let's try and take this thing for a ride. <laughs> So I just realized something. For the PTO to work, you have to be sitting on the seat. I wasn't pushing that down when I hit the PTO and that's probably why I was wanting to cut off. So let's push that down and then hit the PTO and see what happens. All right, here we go. All right, sweet, it works. That's awesome. I did notice a pretty good size hydraulic leak on the steering cylinder. You can see by on the ground there. There's a good bit of oil on that cylinder. But I believe we can rebuild that cylinder fairly easily. Let's see if we can get this freed up a little bit. That thing is rusted solid. I believe this is the old suspension seat. Yeah. This used to be a nice suspension seat. These Milsco seats are uh, are pretty good. It's what I have on my excavator, and they're about a $600 seat or more. So it kind of sucks that this thing is broken. All right, I was able to get it freed up a little bit. All right. Let's see, we got a little bit of suspension out of that. Able to find this seat. Up an old lawnmower. Yeah, that might work. Well, this doesn't look good. Looks like our sliders are. This one's cracked, that one's cracked, and that's cracked. So I've been kind of working with this linkage here. It was really rusted and seized up, but I was able to work it back and forth and I got some movement out of it. Let's uh, let's crank it up and see if the deck will move up and down. All right, we'll just throw this seat on here temporarily. All right, let's go ahead and give it a cold start here. Give it some glow plugs.
Sweet. The air is leaking out of these tires pretty quickly, and I think we have a pretty good sized hydraulic leak on this cylinder here. I noticed that it was spraying up fluid, and also the same thing on this rear steering cylinder just by parking at that a little bit. We have a lot leaking out already. <laughs> Those are loose. You can see this tire's leaking really good. Rim looks kind of rusty, which is making it not seal good. So I am kind of curious to see what this brake system and final drive looks like. feeling that wasn't gonna work all right well i guess this thing's just staying on here these cables are completely seized up but the brake lever actually moves you don't really need brakes on this machine but you can turn on a dime like a zero turn basically how a tractor has their brakes where you can operate them by each pedal so you can turn really tight with this thing yeah really not the right tool for the job it broke one of the ears off on there. Eh. Yeah, that always works. Well, you can see on this side, it has these brake on this brake arm and uh, pad that goes around this drum. And the other side is missing, so yeah, it looks like we'd only have one set of brakes anyway, so. Oh well, I don't really need brakes on this thing. This thing turns pretty good anyway as it is. So here you can see that hydraulic cylinder. And now that I'm looking at it closer, I don't think it's leaking from the actual seals because the rod itself doesn't have any new oil on it. What I think is actually leaking is that brass bolt at the top. It looks to be some kind of vent. I don't know if I can try tightening that or what. So while we're here, we can kind of see a little bit better look at this clutch system. It's a electronic clutch, but this one looks to be in really good shape and it seems to work really well. Another thing I like about this is all these U-joints are greasable. On the Kubota mower I have, they're not greasable. They failed because of that. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely looks like it's coming from the top of that fitting. Now that I'm looking at it, there's no return line on the cylinder. There's just this one line going in, but no other lines. And I'm guessing that where that brass fitting is, that's where the other line would usually go, but it's just like a vent. Let's just see if we can get this undone. That's it. It's just a little screen vent. But why is so much fluid coming out of that? I don't know if there's supposed to be some kind of check valve in there or not. So if any of you guys have any idea why this would be leaking so bad, please post in the comments. Okay, so I think I know what the issue is. So you have a piston inside the cylinder. And in this case, 
I guess there's only supposed to be fluid on this part of the piston and not on this one like you would typically have in a hydraulic cylinder. So this basically is just to vent the air in and out. However, if your seal goes bad on that piston, then fluid's gonna leak past that, and whenever the cylinder pushes, it's gonna push fluid out the end of this vent. So I'm thinking that's what's happening. So basically, this cylinder needs to be rebuilt, which hopefully shouldn't be too bad. You can tell somebody added this bolt because the other side's different. And they put it in from this way. It's supposed to go in from this way in. And then there's a little bolt that goes on it to hold it in. Looks like we're gonna have to cut that off. Actual cylinder looks okay. There is one little nick right there. tube and here's our piston seal so but just by looking at it this seal doesn't look bad so I got these cleaned up and the bore of the cylinder actually looks pretty good not seeing any scratches or anything in there all these seals here look good though so it's kind of really boggling my mind to why it was leaking I'm not seeing any any issues on these Looks like we have a little rubber washer in there, some kind of sealant. And this is our gland in seals. They really don't look bad.
There's a very, very small flat spot on it, but just barely. So this is a seal that I believe the flue was getting past in order to leak out of that, that brass valve. And this seal looks probably better than all of them. So I'm really curious to why that was actually leaking, because these seals seem fine. And there's really not any flat spots on it. I believe these are actually the same here. Yeah, those look to be exactly the same. I'll measure the inside of the bore, but I believe this is about a two inch seal right here. So I think we're in luck. I got this case of standard size O-rings. Looks like ours matches this one perfectly. It's the same exact dimer right at 20. All right, well, I mean, these are just like standard size O-rings, so. There's one seal down. I'm just going to put a little bit of Loctite 515. So off camera, I took some uh, JB Weld and I just filled that little, kind of filed it a little bit and uh, just filed the JB Weld down. Now it's super smooth, so should be fine. If uh, these seals ever did mess up in here, they're really simple to replace. So probably one of the easiest hydraulic cylinders I've ever had to rebuild. So I'm unable to cut the rest of this bolt off under here. So this whole entire deck is going to have to get removed. easier than I thought. this down. I should be able to get that out now. I believe we can get to that bolt now. He welded that guy on there. So this pin that I pulled out Got a little bit of wear right here. So I might weld that up or just weld in a new pin. I'm not sure yet. One thing I did see that was pretty surprising is these blades are actually in really good shape. They're really not even worn, hardly at all. There's some really heavy duty blades, so that's a plus. 
with this mower deck removed, I can really kind of take a look at everything up under here. Here's our hydraulic filter. I'll go ahead and replace that. That thing's pretty rusty. Looks like we have a ball valve here. We can shut the fluid off in order to replace it. That's pretty smart. If any of you guys know what kind of filter this is or have a part number for it, please post it in the comments because I don't see any numbers at all on this thing. It is way too rusted. We have a drive shaft up under there that we'll have to grease all those fittings. So that's going to be fun. Yeah, so it looks like we got to get some parts ordered. We'll get some filters ordered. We'll go ahead and probably get some tubes ordered or tires. We'll try rebuilding that rear steering cylinder. We'll go ahead and finish up getting this fixed. We'll get the hydraulic cylinder put in there. Get a new belt ordered. Get all this stuff greased up and fixed. But I think all that's going to be in a separate video in part two. So until then, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and working on this old rusty piece of junk and I will see you guys on the next video see y'all take care later hey buddy you sleeping? sleeping? buddy